As Ryan mentioned, I'm Chris Tierney, uh, talking about uh, Framework 1 tonight. Uh, I know a few of you are familiar with Framework 1. Raise show of hands if you're not. Two of you. Sarah. Okay. Um, Framework 1 is, um, is a MVC um, convention, I guess you would call it. And uh, basically, there's two different uh, there's two different types of frameworks out there. Uh, for example, like Model Glue would be uh, it would be based upon configuration. You have XML files that tell it how to behave. Same same with uh, Fusebox. Whereas uh, Framework One is by uh, convention instead of configuration. So there's no um, there's no real, uh, there's no XML files to deal with. There's no real configuration files to deal with. Um, and what that does is instead of telling your framework on how you want it to act, it, it basically the framework tells you how you should be acting. And you have to put your files into um, specific folders and you have to name them specific names um, for the most part. And the reason um, the reason I've started using uh, Framework 1 lately and I've actually gone away from like Model Glue is because Model Glue is, is pretty overly complex for the needs uh, of, of most of my projects. Whereas Framework 1, you can just put it in and, and go. You don't have to configure anything. Um, it's pretty straightforward and it's lightweight. That's the, that's the big plus. And um, it's helped me uh, actually get some better programming methods uh, in, into uh, my projects. So basically, with your uh, with your MVC, we're going to um, stick with this model pretty pretty strictly. Uh, we have a views folder, we have a controllers folder, and then we have. Um, Actually, it's called a services folder for your model. Your uh, your view doesn't know about your model, and your model doesn't know about your view. Your controller is the glue in between that tells it how to how to um, talk to each other. The in your model, which is our services directory, you can have uh, your service, which it tells it you know x plus y equals z. Um, or you can uh, have your service go off to a DAO and do a database call, uh, or off to a gateway to do like a Twitter call, um, or you can have it speak to your uh, persistent entities. If you take a look at this uh, skeleton folder that I have right here, um, you'll see controllers, layouts, services, and views. This is just kind of the same folders that I just talked about. Um, this is the basics of, if you ignore all this up here, uh, just underneath the skeleton folder, this is the basics of your framework one. You have your controllers, uh, services, which is your model, and your views. You have your standard um, default page, which is index.cfm, and of course your application.cfc. The one folder I did not talk about is your layouts. Um, your layouts is your wrapper around your view. Um, you can have just one layout or you can have multiple layouts. And basically it's your header footer that wraps around uh, your views so you don't have to continuously uh, program in the exact same um, elements. If we go to uh, my skeleton directory here, you'll see just uh, the default layout. This is what comes with Framework 1, um, and it's called the skeleton directory when you download it. This is exactly what you'll see. And what this consists of here is what you're seeing on the top layer is your view. and if you go into the views directory, you'll see main, which is um, it, your when you when you don't put in uh, what your action wants to be, it defaults to your main 
uh, section it's called which is your main folder and if I if st take a step back here for a minute um, it's based upon uh, action uh, URL params so as you'll see here I have a action equals main section with the default view you'll see in here I have the main section with the default view if I were to rename this this would show an error now it can't find it but if I test it um, oh your controller your oh Turn that off for development? There is. Okay. Yeah, by default, by default, um, your uh, controllers, I believe it's just your controllers or cat uh, inside of framework one. Um, and then every time up front, and then every time you run a service uh, through the framework one service call, the service is also cached. Uh, to reload the cache, you do just reload equals true inside of your URL params. But as you can see here, now I have the, the action change from default to default test, and that picks up your new view default test. Now, that's, that's your view, and the view looks like this. As you can see on the page here, just a default layout, default view, page rendered. And um, you'll see here, uh, RC title equals default view. What that's doing is it's setting the title attribute inside the RC scope, which is a re request controller scope. Your RC and your FW scopes are used and actually your local uh, scopes are, are defined and reserved by your framework one um, if you do uh, if you set something inside of your view you always want to do a local local scope like that but you probably want to do that or would you is there cases where you want to do yeah um, if you're doing some uh, like looping uh, oh, okay. over a query, things yeah. of that nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. something real basic. Uh, normally, it tends to not be inside of your view, more of your control or your service, but uh, it, it, there are cases where it will be in there. And the reason why, it's, why you need to use the local scope inside of um, a CFM file, where normally you don't need to do that, that's more reserved for your CFCs, is because um, the, D, the Default.cfm is a include um, via a CFC. Um, this so includes in some method somewhere. When you do this, you're saying that test is now local to that method and protected inside that method. In a yeah, it, it vars it var scopes the local gotcha. scope, and because it's an include inside of a CFC, then that they they share um, okay. they share you variables. That, you might end up with you will, yeah. yeah. Uh, so RC title, and remember that, and I'll go uh, back to that here in a minute, and then just your normal uh, cold fusion code. <clears throat> Where the RC.title comes into play is in your layouts. Remember I said your layouts is your is your wrapper. So if we go into layouts here, you'll see our uh, HTML head body tags. And this is where the RC title comes into play. So when we set RC.title, that will output whatever it's set to in the inside of the title. Wasn't that what your uh, like URL frames and stuff go into RC 
as well? They do. Any, any type of um, URL params and any type of uh, form params, uh, they get copied into the RC scope. So the viewer can pass title equals it in the URL. What would that do to I believe it gets overwritten. Okay. Yeah, it gets overwritten. Which is which is a good point because you could um, you could screw around with somebody's code that way. Um, so what you're seeing here, if you scroll down a little bit on, on line eight here, is uh, the body, and um, what that is is it says, okay, we want to insert um, we want to insert your view inside of. Um, this variable here. So we're going to output your view, which is this, right there. And then basically the rest of this will be your footer. So body is whatever is produced by that other code, that view code. Yeah, your body is your view. So why isn't, I suppose this is the end game, so that one doesn't have to be scoped or whatever. Why isn't the body? Body is uh, generated by FW1. Um, I don't know why they have it like that. Now, if you um, so so basically these these um, if I go back into the view here, you have RC dot today. So where where is that coming from? When you go to your controllers. And you click on, and you have a, a main.cfc. What that's doing is it's coming from main.cfc is the same as your section here in your in your action param. So if I were to have um, people instead of main, then this would be people.cfc. Inside of this controller here, what we're going to do when we initialize it, we're going to set the um, the fw. Uh, variable to uh, an argument passed in the FW and what that is is it's um, the framework methods uh, it's a it's an object that we can call things against and a good example of that is uh, variables.fw.service so we're calling the service method inside of the FW object so and in every controller we're going to set that FW um, variable up or the FW object up You'll notice here uh, we have a uh, method called default, and the reason that's called default is because that core that aligns with our default method. So we have a default. Um, I'm sorry, default view. So we have a default view. It's called default.cfm, and it looks inside of our controller for the method default. Um, again, it's instead of um, configuration it's going to be um, convention it's going to be looking for specific specific uh, methods so inside of our controller here since since this default method is going to be run every time our default view is going to be run then what we do uh, here is we can uh, set things inside of our inside of our RC scope uh, you'll see um, RC dot when is now so we can get that from our view if we wanted to. But really what they're doing here is um, they are setting rc.today as the result of the formatter service with the lawn date method. So what, what this is here is uh, you have your framework object service method. We're telling the service method we want to get the formatter service with a lawn date method. And we're going to put it into uh, the RC scope of today. This uh, can also be rewritten as rc.today equals um, Just like that. You, you would use 
second syntax when you had maybe arguments to pass or something like that? Right. Uh, and normally uh, you, you try and stay away from what I just typed because uh, you're supposed to basically just use this as the, as the glue um, and not really have business logic in here. But it happens. Sometimes you just can't get around it. And so the reason that you would want to use what I just typed in is because the um, fw.service actually runs after just directly before um, the view is called. So if I were to do um, if, if I were to have another one called uh, Chris dot test and I can pass in an argument like this that would not work um, because of the w just because of the way it's it's uh, presented inside of uh, how it's called because they're all queued and the first one wouldn't necessarily yeah it puts it in a queue would be immediately available to the second call exactly gotcha. so if you put it into it would it or probably not well, I guess How do you get around that? Yeah. You need to do that. If you need to put in a, a variable, uh, you would use um, basic. You would basically do this, oh, and the end request, or? like this rc dot today, and then like if we call. I see. Yeah, this is not queued, whereas this becomes queued, but because the queue becomes after, the line 11 is immediately ran, 12 is not, therefore 12 will always have access to the RC today. Um, in complicated situations, you can also do rc.chris equals new um, services.chris. And then he has a new one, doesn't he, like DW1 or something? Or yeah. What does that stand for? DI. Yeah. 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 And I think this is the basic one. I think, and then the other is like more complex. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't experimented with that yeah, one. Yeah, I've just seen it. DI one is very nice. It works well. With oh, is it another uh, framework or, or? It's a it's a dependency. It's not like, a, like an MVC thing, but it's like... Cold Spring. Cold Spring, exactly. Oh, okay. Except it's, uh, you know, once again, a convention of reconfiguration. Um, oh, that's nice. It works, it works really nicely, yeah. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> so that's your controller. Any questions on your controller? Okay, so what this is doing here is when this calls uh, the service, we're going to be looking for the services directory, and you see here formatter. So that corresponds with formatter in here, and then there's that lawn date method that we were looking at. So this lawn date is going to return a, f a formatted um, date, basically, uh, back to the controller. Uh, so we're going back from service to back to controller, back to your view. Taking the taking it back to the basics here. Um, basically, the only thing that you really need to get framework one rolling is this inside of your application. And what that's doing is it's um, extending uh, just one file, the framework.cfc, uh, which is the framework one um, file. And uh, so as you can tell, it's pretty lightweight. It's only got about 
1700 lines in it. And they add some, um, if, if you, if you uh, copy off of their um, skeleton, he provides some uh, examples in here of some configuration that you can do if you want to. Uh, and the way you're doing that is basically uh, variables dot framework um, oops. and we can do like um, instead of action inside of the uh, URL we could call it like method um, and so when we do that then you can use method instead of action. And there's a lot of different... Um, and this is where you would set so you don't have to reload each time in development? Or is that somewhere else? This is where you would set it. Uh, it probably is in there. I can check Let's see here. What I do here is uh, if I have <clears throat> local, I set my URLs up on my local machine as .local, something .local. If I see there's local inside of my uh, inside oh. of my HTTP host, then I add that uh, reload application on every request equals true, and that way I don't need to do a reload equals true inside the URL. Um, it slows things down on every page request because you no longer have your caching. Uh, so be careful with that. You, on larger applications, you may not want to do that. For example, like our our client Rex. Uh, how how long's the how long's the initialization minutes? So it'd be it'd be you know a couple minutes for each page. So you know you really can't do that. Uh, but for smaller applications, you definitely can do that. Okay, so that brings up a question: How do you get it to pick up the change you're working on? So if you change the CFC, you don't have the implicitly in it on. Well, the oh. the reload equals true is only reloading the uh, aspects of um, of framework one, isn't it? And then there's and then you guys have an init for your uh, uh, cold spring, right? It really cold spring is the one that uh, takes the longest. Um, so what a reload is how long? But you're asking for like fine-tuned reloading of a controller. Uh, yeah, so if it takes minutes to reload and you're working on a CFC, does it take minutes to see your changes every time? Or is there a way to tell it to just load up the one CFC you're working on? It sounds like there is a... No, not a, not a single CFC. Yeah, it's either you reload the, the, the whole, whole thing, thing or, or nothing. But the, <coughs> like Chris said, the reason it takes so long to reload your racks is because of the, you know, all the other dependencies. Right. I have the same issue at work, that's why I have so I work on stuff. I have to reload all the time, but it takes, for me, luckily it only takes 30 seconds, but it's still a pain, so why am I changing for every 30 seconds? Usually, uh, framework one itself, when you pass that, that reload param in the uh, URL, it, it reloads pretty quickly. It's, it's not. Yeah, I think I kind of I kind of misspoke. It it's not going to take minutes. Uh, the minutes is is if you reload the dependency injection like Cold Spring. Uh, whereas um, in all reality, if you're using dependency injection and you do a reload on the framework, it's not going to take that long. It's probably ten seconds, or you know, it really depends on what you're working on. But I, so you know, if if you have framework one. Um, caching everything uh, by itself and inside the application scope you know you you're reloading everything back into uh, the application variables stuff like that if you're doing it on your own then that could definitely add up but what if you go into using like cold spring um, then that removes all that time away from reloading the framework one uh, because you don't reload all that dependencies again unless if you do um, like in cold spring it's a nit equals true and then it takes a matter of minutes so if you split it up, but no, there's not a way to, unfortunately, to just reload uh, just one. Um, so I have some sample code here uh, going away from the skeleton. 
and on my application.cfc, basically I'm just giving it a uh, application name, turn on session management, and giving it a data source. Um, and like before, uh, you know, if I'm doing a local, then I don't basically don't cache anything. So the include.cfm, that's what's, what's in that? Include.cfm? Or I mean the index.cfm. Index.cfm doesn't have anything in there. Uh, it's there basically so IAS doesn't error out. Uh, your app, your application.cfc, which extends your framework.cfc, uh, framework.cfc uh, overwrites or, or intercepts, intercepts the request and handles it as, as needed instead of using the index.cfm. Uh, Index.cfm is just strictly there for for your app or for your web server not to error out. And there's actually ways around uh, around this if you wanted to um, uh, if you wanted to not show index.cfm, um, you could turn on some URL rewriting to get rid of the index.cfm. Um, now, if I remember right. If I um, let's see here, action equals uh, may not default. This is what it's doing on on the. This is what it's defaulting to. And if I remember right, SES is actually already enabled. Oh yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're right. Okay. Yes. Um, so SES is actually automatically uh, in here. I think you need the slash to die. It actually worked. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, that did. Oh. That's cool. And the reason this is different is because it doesn't like uh, the AJAX I have in here doesn't doesn't like that for some reason. Actually, not too sure why that is. It's, oh, because it's probably doing a um, a relative. So actually, if I do um, yep, there we go. So, uh, so that's the nice part about it. Even though it looks kind of weird with the index.cfm, that is actually SES. Um, it, who, who doesn't know what SES is? Okay. What is it? It's a search engine safe. Um, it really doesn't matter anymore. I don't think uh, it used to matter uh, because um, you know it, it, the search engines wouldn't pick up you know your URL params. Uh, but that's really not the case anymore. Yahoo and Google both pick those up now, and they're they're familiar with it. Um, but I think it actually gives you a little better ranking that if you have a keyword in there. So if I were to have like um, uh, like Twitter feed, I think that ranks better inside the search engines because it's un it's inside of the URL as a as a static URL per se, uh, rather than if you were to put in action equals Twitter dot feed, I don't think that gives you as good as the ranking. But it's it's pretty minimal increase, I think. So on back to the application. Um, if we scroll down, this is where we can go ahead and uh, put in um, dependency injection. You'll see here setup application that is uh, that is specific to framework one, and basically it's like 
what is it, on an application request or something like that, it extends that. But basically, this is only ran once each time the application uh, scope is created. And um, what we could do is instead of having uh, Framework 1 manage our services, we can actually uh, tell it we're going to use Beans instead. Uh, and what it's doing here is it's um, telling, uh, it's, it's putting into the application.beanfactory uh, the cold spring and it's just telling it where the beans are um, with, with the cold spring config variable over here. So we're putting this into the application scope and then we're telling framework one right here, set bean factory uh, to use this object. So instead of, instead of framework one going in and, and finding the services directory and caching it by itself, it's going to rely upon something like ColdSpring to handle that for it. And there's some, um, there's some shortcuts uh, that allow you to actually uh, not do as much programming, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, if you take a look at setup request here, uh, what that's doing is each time that the page is requested, you can put in something like uh, authentication logic. So what I'm doing here is I'm seeing, okay, uh, do I have, or am I going to the people action? So action equals people, and this could be people.default. If, if I'm inside of that, um, if I'm inside the people section, and I and I'm not, you know, I don't have a, like a logged in flag underneath my session. And this is just really simple. Uh, then what we're going to do is instead of calling whatever controller that we went to, so the controller would be people.cfc. I'm going to say, okay, we aren't logged in, so we're actually going to run the login controller. So underneath controllers, we have a login controller. But if you are logged in and so you say, okay, I want to log out, then we're going to go ahead and clear my, my uh, logged in session flag to log me out. So if we go to this link right here, which is action equals people, you'll notice it's asking me for a password. And the reason for that is, is because I don't have the session.logged in flag. You can't find it. And I'm in the people section. So if we go to the login controller, what it's doing here is it's saying, okay, am I passing in a password at that point? Or if the password's wrong, and right now I'm just looking for password equals password, then we're going to ask for the login again, uh, the login view. The login view is just really simple. It just basically ask for a password. Otherwise, if the passwords, you know, if we have the password field being uh, passed in, and this actually should be rc.password. Um, if the password is, is passed in and the password is password, if it's correct, then we're going to go ahead and put session.logged in equals true, and it'll take us to um, what we requested in the first place. You had another form. Oh, yeah, just right after you changed Right after you work. So in here, uh, I'm trying to get into the people section, but I'm not logged in. So I'll put in my password, my super secret password here. Same password everybody else has. <laughs> oh. uh, you said it's not password. And that build.url, that's built in. Right, I'll get to that here in a second. So it accepted my password there, and it's given me uh, the page. And as he um, and as he uh, uh, saw here, the the build URL that is actually um, 
I'm not sure if fw.build URL will work or not, but it, it basically it is coming from the from the framework object. And what that does is there's a there's a number of um, methods built into framework one. There's a whole list of them on his um, on his documentation here. Public API methods like uh, abort controller and build URL. Here's our build URL. And so what this is doing is I could say uh, basically index.cfm action equals um, people. And basically it would do the same thing. So why would as that. you put people dot something? Is that because we can defaulted or? Yeah, that does the exact same thing. So you just kind of ignore that, especially when you have kind of a one action folder. You just kind of right, and this, this uh, code is really simple. Most of the time you'll actually probably have like okay. people dot login or something so like that. Action in that section. And that would they take. call that section, right? The first part of that is called a section. Or? Yeah. Yeah. So this would be your section, and this would be your action. Uh, if you do, if you don't define your action, it defaults to default, and that is actually definable inside of the application um, uh, configuration. In the application file, one of the things I've tried to use and not been successful is the before and after functions. Have you seen those? Yeah, there is a. Um, I think you can actually do like before request and after request. Uh, Inside of your methods, um, controllers like uh, I, right, each I, one you can actually do before and after. Then. Yeah, I believe you can do function before default. Okay. Let's, uh, start default. Is it start default? So if I go to my, um, this is a bad place to put it. It's sort of a mini application framework inside of your CFC. Yeah. Another way to control more granular permission. Um, this should abort. Uh, I like Cold Fusion just had an abort. Yeah, maybe it's not recognized. No, it should be it's recognized. It's not a script. It's not a, a function call. It's just the word abort. Oh. You can't pass a message to it? No. I bet you there is a FW1 abort. Hmm. Oh, 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 it's a keyword. Okay. Um, show error message show error not message. for attribute show error. Try try show error equal to go. Well that's maddeningly unhelpful. There we go. So you could you could actually do like this error is crazy. And you could pass some you could do throw in there too, I guess. But uh, yeah, so that that works. So start default uh, runs first and then your default method runs. And then I guess it would be end default after that. Uh, it should be way, the same way inside the application. I'm not positive about that. That was kind of slick. I just couldn't make it work for me. Hmm. So is that kind of how you handle the queuing thing where you, you queue it up and then have an after or an end and then you yeah. process the results? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely a much more complicated way of doing it, though. <laughs> uh, the difference is, is, I guess, if you do the before in, or the start and end methods uh, and actually pass in the things that you need, um, then if you use uh, framework one to cache your services, it will it will actually cache. 
because if you do a RC dot variable equals, it's not caching at that point. But if you do a framework dot or FW dot service, then it caches at that point. Um, so yeah, so that is a good point. Um, when you do all these, you're sort of, you're sort of overriding default methods that are down in the guts of that CFC, of that FW that CFC. Uh, yeah, on missing view, uh, you extend it. Uh, so if you go into here um, and you look for right there, um, instead of doing view not found method, whatever that is, you're doing your own method. Custom check or whatever. Yeah. You're actually you're not extending it; you're overriding it. Yeah. See that. Um, so one of the things I'm seeing that's difficult, or not difficult, but to watch for is that you have to watch out for your naming conventions because, for your methods, because FW1 does things under the hood based on how things are named. There are some reserved yeah. uh, method names. Yeah. And if you go back to your application, uh, that's where you're going to see the majority of it. I'm not sure. I mean, inside of your inside of your uh, controllers and services, I guess. No, it would just be controllers inside of your controllers. Well, if, you, if you wanted to create a method called start default, yeah, and then call it arbitrarily, that wouldn't work you may, very yeah, good. You may not realize it's getting called all the time. You're like, hey, what's going on? You may you may get a loop there. <laughs> um, okay, so I covered setup uh, request uh, using that for your authentication. Uh, before I get it to on this in view there, um, let me cover some other aspects. Uh, let's see what I got in the default here. I guess I'll just go into that. Um, the, you'll see here the on missing view, um, and actually to go back back a step here. If you're doing a JSON request, I'm sorry, an AJAX request, uh, you're gonna go back to, let's say, a service. Let's say I call um, Chris service directly. The problem with doing that is when you call Chris service directly, the, your service is not initialized. Unless if you do that inside your service, like if you were to create like a Ajax proxy method that calls your init and just becomes a pain. You don't have your, um, you don't have anything that Framework 1 provides you with anymore because it's not calling Framework 1 at this point, basically. Um, so the way around that, and, and if you were to call, let's say, a, a view, uh, you'd have the problem without turning off uh, a certain variable. It would return back all sorts of information that you that you just don't want. This could include debugging information. It could include the wrapper for your page. Just stuff stuff that you don't want for um, if you're like returning JSON or, or XML. So one way around that uh, is you could actually create different views for um, different views for each JSON or AJAX request and you could put in there request uh, dot layout equals false and what that does is it turns off um, it turns off your wrapper and then you could just basically um, output on your screen just a, a JSON stream and that's all that's all kind of messy um, a little cleaner method that I like uh, to do here is basically um, if I go to, um, you'll see here I have, I'm including a main.default.js file. If I go to that, um, I'm calling, when the document's ready, a get quote method, which in turn gets the index.cfm with an action of main.quote. We take a look here in our views and we don't see a main.quote. It's not there. Um, 
but inside of our uh, controller, our main controller, you'll see here I have a function quote. So what the application does, application.cfc does, it says, okay, I can't find my view. So I'm going to run this method on missing view inside of my application.cfc. And it's going to say, okay, inside of my controller, do I have an rc.data? If I do, then I'm going to assume that you want JSON. We can put some more stuff around it like um, MIME types, detection, or, or stuff like that to see if we want XML so versus it's JSON. A viewless controller. It just basically pulls so, back the data instead of yeah. rendering. Yep. So we're going to assume we want JSON. We're going to turn off the layout wrapper. So we're not returning our wrapper. Um, we're going to. Um, and this is a little hack here, and there's a couple of ways to do this, but this is the way that I did it, is I tur to turn off debugging, unfortunately in CF script you can't do that. Um, so I created a um, helper inside of my services. Uh, you see here it's calling utility. I have a script-based utility, and then I have a, um, I have a, um, a tag-based utility. And what I'm doing here is the tag or the method show debug output if I return if I give it a false or just nothing because it defa defaults to it or I'm on the wrong one here false here I'm turning off the debug so it's just a little bit a little bit of a hack around turning off your debug output in that way you don't have to worry about this in production unless somebody goes in there and turns something on that they're not supposed to but you want to be able to develop around this and if you ever have debugging turned on, you'll never get back your data that you're expecting because you get back your data plus all your debugging information, and then it'll just error out basically. So I'm turning debug output off via that hack. And then here is more or less kind of another hack here. Um, what I'm doing is I'm um, you can do in tags, you can do uh, CF content and then like, uh, I think it's like type and then you can put in your MIME type. But it, there's not an equivalent to that inside of your CF script. So we're going to the Java level, uh, get page context, response, and we're going to set the content type to be uh, a MIME type of, app, of JSON. Now technically, I don't need to do that and, and it'll return as a MIME type of HTML and jQuery, I can put in um, MIME type equals uh, JSON, uh, so it basically converts it. But really, this is the proper way of doing it. So I'm going to be returning a MIME type of, of JSON for my data. And then I'm going to serialize um, my data structure into, into JSON. And uh, so it's what it's doing is it's calling the rc.data which I had uh, inside of my controller. Have you thought about adding that to the that to the framework? Like calling it JSON or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. To make it a standard? Right. Uh, I haven't thought about it, no. Yeah, you maybe you should. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Um so what it's doing here is, is, is inside of my uh, controller, I'm creating rc.data and passing it back the Git code services data. Uh, so I'm serializing that and just returning it. So if we turn on our developer console here, you'll see that I made a request and it comes back uh, as a um, as a JSON uh, object real simple just straight string and you'll see in the headers that it's actually uh, a JSON content type Very cool. if for some reason they call um, a method that does not exist. It, 
it will uh, well it's supposed no, it's main or we're trying to see main air, right? I think I need to change it well if if I did it right you were supposed to you were supposed to bring up the the error page I'm not too sure what I'm missing in there, but you kind of get the point. It might be because you're returning it. Yeah, maybe that. Then I need to set it or call it or this method or whatever. Yeah. Well, once you get it fixed, you can submit it. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> it's supposed to work. Uh, so that's that's how I do that's how I do it, Jason. Uh, so I don't ever have to program in for each request exactly what I want it to do. It's just there, and I and I basically all I have to do is create a. Um, so when you're programming that, you just have to make sure you a you have a data, a variable RC data, mm -hmm. and b that you don't create an associated view. You could right. Yeah, and that's pretty cool because you could do that for XML PDF. Yeah. And then it'd be out of the box. They yeah, but JSON data, XML data, PDF, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, that's, I like it. Uh, so in services here, I'm getting a, getting the quote service, um, which you'll see here, real simple. I've just created an array, randomly picking out of the array, and then just returning that string from the array. So I'm just returning a string back to uh, that controller, which passes it back into JSON. And as you can see here, it, it changes every time. Or we can, just for uh, demo's sake here, um, I do have it also bound. So if I click on the button, it actually gets a new code each time as well. That's calling it from the server uh, each time I click that. And uh, as kind of as a as a wrap up, um, just so you see how your um, services work here for getting data inside of Framework One, pretty straightforward. Um, that is calling the people service. I'm gonna close some of this out here. We'll go into the uh, actually the people um, controllers. You'll see here that I'm, I'm returning rc.person and I'm calling um, the get people method from the people service with a, a current ID that I'm on. Um, so I know to, uh, to get a next one uh, based upon the ID that I'm sending it. So the controller calls the people service get people method, which is underneath here, get people method. And this is just really simple. I could do some data modification in here if I wanted to. But it's going to call the people DAO. And the way I'm doing that, and you can do this a number of ways, is I set a people DAO property. And then I set that object here as an implicit, uh, with an implicit setter, uh, as services.peopleDAO. So we're basically, I'm injecting the people DAO into the people DAO object. And then I'm calling that here uh, with the get people method. Inside the DAO, the get people method, all that is, is it's returning uh, a query. So I'm doing just a select a number of columns from the person dot person table. And then I'm just incrementing. So I can hit view next person here and it, it'll increment through the database for different names. So we go from controller to service to DAO and then back. We're going to make that loop around, and and uh, it's going to give our data back to our to our view. So that's pretty much uh, about the scope of it for basics. Um, I guess one thing that I I did remember is uh, let's see, yeah, I forget where. Put that. Oh yeah, for login. Inside login controller. 
There are, like I uh, mentioned before, there are a lot of uh, public API methods. Um, a, a couple more of them are uh, if I wanted to return a different view, I can do fw.setView and I can return the login view instead of what was requested. Could you have it then run another action and return that view? Like instead of set view, maybe set action? Uh, I believe that is redirect. Um, I think that's what the redirect does. Because when you do that set view, it doesn't actually run that action on that page. It doesn't run the controller? Yeah, it doesn't run that. It just runs the, it just goes to the view. Right. So, okay. I didn't know if you did that before. It's okay. Yeah, there is a, there's a redirect, and I believe uh, you can preserve different scopes. Um, oh, maybe that's what we were missing. Because we actually tried to do a redirect in the action, and it didn't work. Okay. Because the the stack, like you guys were talking about, didn't run, so that it didn't exist yet. Like the service call. What I believe this does is preserving scope. I believe it it uh, puts it into a session variable, and then basically does a cold fusion um, location, and then it knows that it was redirected and it brings everything back out of session and puts it into its proper scopes. What we ended up doing was just doing a end action and then just doing the... Oh, okay. Yeah, right there. Then with, yeah, that redirect. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so you can do a set view. You can also, um, like I have in my example in the application here on... Uh, if you're supposed to be logged in, you can tell it to run a different controller instead of the requested controller. So if I'm doing the, if I'm doing a action equals people, it's actually going to do an action equals login basically. Um, so I suppose you could do controller login and then set view. Yeah, that'd be interesting. There are a few different ways you could do it. So uh, if you want us to know where all this is, it's underneath GitHub uh, for uh, Sean Corfield. And um, I'll leave this up here, but does anybody have any questions? Like I said uh, in the beginning, I use this uh, pretty much as much as I can because it actually makes things simpler in the long run. Um, because you don't have to think about where to put this and where to put that and in, in, in this actually um, provides some shortcuts as, as well so you don't have as much programming to do. Um, plus it gives you the, um, the real simple uh, in, uh, dependency injection and, uh, or you could just use uh, its built-in uh, services uh, cache which makes your pages uh, load faster. So that's about all I got then. Cool, thanks guys.